All right, I decided to preach on this topic this morning. I was just thinking, you know, because obviously the, ele- the election's happening. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect, I mean, maybe many of us didn't expect to sw- it to swing to Labour so much. But, um, you know, so I wanted to preach a topic like this today, because no matter, you know, what the result was, I think it's important that we have the right perspective and we s- stay positive on things. So that's what I want to preach about today. I want to preach about how to stay positive. And I've got six things in my sermon that might help you to, um, you know, have a positive outlook on life. Now, there is bad philosophy out there that just thinks, you know, whatever, you just never think of anything negative. But we don't want to go the opposite direction, right? And everything we think is negative. Because there's, there's a balance there where, you know, you want to think on positive things and then you also need to be aware of the negative things. But what I want to say this morning is, you know, if, if, the, if the balance tips in any direction, the, the, the way it should tip is in the positive direction, right? So we see here um, in Philippians 4. So the first one I want to talk about is how to stay positive is you want to make sure, first of all, you have the right values. The right values. Sometimes people have the wrong values and that's why sometimes they have negativity in their life because they're not valuing the right things. So in Philippians 4, we read, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, and sometimes, you know, I find it a lot, you know, in the uh, you know, so-called freedom movement where people are so negative all the time. They're always thinking on the negative things. And that's not what God wants us to be primarily focused on. So it's not that you are ignorant about negative things and you don't think of them at all, but where should the focus be? I mean, in this passage, the Bible is telling us we should be thinking about these sorts of things. So what are the things we should be thinking about? Things that are true, right? Where do we get that from? I talked a bit about this in Bible Club this morning with the kids. True, like the Word of God, things that are true as opposed to false, right? Sometimes people are thinking too much on things that are false, right? Rather than things that are true. So that's what I'm saying. We want the balance to be there. And that's one way you stay positive is that you think your mind is consumed more so with the things that are good and true. Whatsoever things are honest. This is when people tell the truth. Whatsoever things are just. What is that? That's fair. Things that are fair, justice, judge. Think of that. Whatsoever things are pure. So pure, we think about, you know, being less sin, like less sinful, like getting sin out of our life. You know, things that are not filled with sin, not fornication, drugs, things like that. Purity, and, uh, you know, sexual purity as well. Whatsoever things are lovely, so full of love, like doing good things for others. And whatsoever things are of good report, so that's when it's, you've got good things to say about something, like a good reputation. If there be any virtue, so these are the things that I'm, the verse is saying to think on, but then it's saying, if there be any virtue, referring to these things, and if there be any praise, so if there's anything good about it, or if there's anything to, good to say about it, or to lift it up, these are the things that we should think on. Right? So we want to have the right values. Sometimes when people, you know, the, the Bible doesn't tell us to think on things that are fun, expensive, new, shiny, you know, so people have the wrong values in their life. If we focus too much on things of the earth, then we may get negative, right? Because the earth and the things of the earth sometimes don't go our way. But when we think of godly things, good things, then we can stay positive. So maybe you have too much of a negative outlook on life because you're valuing the wrong things. You know, maybe you're too materialistic. You know, people, uh, you know, they, they spend their whole life on materialistic things. I mean, you can see it in politics, right? You've got to own your own home, own your own home, you know? And obviously the government's destroyed our economy and it's difficult to make a living in Australia and, and, to, and we're not very prosperous as we could be. But, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't own your own home, you know? Is that the sort of things we should be consumed with? Should we can be consumed with work and material possessions and comfort in this life? Or, or should we be more consumed with, you know, are people saved? You know, am I, you know, do I, am I an effective soldier for Jesus Christ? What am I doing for the gospel? What am I doing to improve things in this world? So don't be too materialistic. Don't think too much on the things of this world. You know, materialistic possessions, 
clothing, jewelry, riches, things like that. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew 6. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So you see your values and what you value will change your outlook on life, right? So like when I talked about with, you know, with children and family, like if you appreciate people more than you appreciate things, even when you lose things, right? You can still have the, you still have the people in your life. You know, it'll change you know, what you value, will change whether or not you, how much you care when things, when, when you lose things, all right? So number one is, do you have the right values? Are you thinking on the right things? As Christians, we should be more positive than we should be more negative. We have positive thinking on things that are good rather than things that are evil. Number two, <clears throat> oh, sorry, and just on that first point again, like, you know, that, because a lot of new Christians do that. You know, a lot of new Christians, you know, they start, they jump on the internet, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with the internet, right? There's a lot, plenty you can learn on the internet. But everyone's, everyone's been down that rabbit hole, right? You go down that rabbit hole of, you know, you learn one thing and then you realize how evil things are and then you, you know, you, you realize that, or the banks or whoever, you know, different people think it's different. Different people behind it. Is it the Jews? Is it the banks? Is it, you know, ultimately it's Satan all behind it? But, you know, you can go deep down that rabbit hole and it can consume you and, and it can discourage you, right? It discourages you from doing, you know, from trying to fight back. So, you know, people go down that hole and then they, sometimes people, you know, they suffer with depression because it's, it's like the world is so dark and it is. And that's why, you know, we're not meant to be thinking on how evil Satan is and how evil this world is and how the depths of Satan and the depths of depravity, you know, and, and sometimes Christians get caught up in that. They say, oh, I'm going to expose it all. You know, and they're going to expose, and they're going to expose, like, the homosexual agenda, and they expose all the occult and expose all these things. And I don't think that's, that's what we should be doing. We shouldn't be going down that deep. You know, it's, it's good to be knowledgeable about these things and know about them, but to go that deep, I don't think... That's what God wants us to primarily focus on, and we can see in uh, Philippians 4 8. So, number two, how, how else? What's another tip to stay positive? To, to, is the company that you keep, right? So, not only your values, what you value, but the sort of people you hang around, right? 1 Corinthians 15 Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Right, so this is the, the, the sort of people you talk to. So communications doesn't only come from friends and family, but your circle of influence, but also the things you watch, right? The things you watch. So, you know, the sort of movies and media, I mean, we know that, uh, you know, people that just, they get home and they just switch the TV on and they just let that thing talk to them. They just watch the media and watch the news and whatever shows are on, they just watch them all. And that's why the Bible says, hey, be not deceived. Don't, don't. Don't um, think that that's not affecting you. It does affect you, right? And sometimes you don't even realize it when you're brainwashed by the wrong type of things. We want to be brainwashed by the Bible, right? We don't want to be brainwashed by the wrong things in life. And sometimes it shows when people watch you know, too many sort of romantic movies. And, you know, they have a false expectation of romance, false expectation of marriage, things like that. They think dating's okay because everyone's doing it. You know, everyone's doing it on TV, all my friends are doing it, you know. Well, the Bible says, hey, be not deceived. You know, you need your life to be guided by the principles of God's Word, not what other people do. So, you know, sometimes people have wrong expectations in marriage, and it's because, you know, they watch too many movies. They watch too many romance movies. You know, they have this expectation that women are always going to be just eternally slender and beautiful. You know, men are always just going to be eternally emotionally conscious. I mean by that, that they, you know, that they try to connect emotionally with people, but then, then that's not always the case. You know, I think a successful marriage is just appreciating any attempt in that direction. You, know, you can move in that direction and loving them regardless. But family and friends as well. You know, like sometimes people say, oh, you know, my friends aren't that bad. Or my, you know, the people I hang around are not that bad. But, you know, are they, are they Bible-believing Christians? You know, are they sort of Christians that encourage you to go to church? Or are they, oh, you know, they say, oh, why do you go to church so much? You know, you know, but they say, oh, they're not that bad because, what, they're not a rapist? They're not a murderer? 
You know, they're not a drug dealer. But, you know, that's how, that just shows like how low our standards drop. You know, when people think, oh, yeah, well, I hang around all my mates all the time. But do, do they encourage you to do better in Christianity? Do they encourage you to, you know, are they, are they friends that are, you know, saying, hey, where were you at church on Sunday? You know, those are the sort of friends you want, right? But then your friends will have an impact on you and their values will become your values if you don't take heed. You know, bad habits as well. Sometimes people are trying to quit drinking, quit smoking, quit wasting time, maybe put, quit playing computer games, quit you know, spending too much time watching sports and you know, just wasting it, vain things in our lives. But then you hang around people that do all that stuff. right? And it's so much easier to fall back into those old ways because of the sort of company that you keep. So it's the same with the way you think. You know, if you're constantly around negative people, just complaining about the world all the time, that's different when you hang around people that are trying to solve the problems in the world, and that's going to impact you too. So the company you keep is going to also affect whether you are a positive thinking person or a negative thinking person. So look at uh, Galatians 6. <coughs> Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. So it's saying there that when you go and try and correct somebody, the way in which you do it matters as well. You know, some people, they walk around just trying to correct everyone, uh, trying to be morally superior, as opposed to actually caring about people and, and knowing your own weaknesses too, in the spirit of humbleness and meekness. But look at this. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So what is that saying? That, you know, when you want to try and help people and correct people or try and have an influence on people's lives, you need to take heed to yourself that they don't rub off on you. You know, this is why people sometimes say, oh, you know, well, I want, to, I want my kids to be in the public school so they can be a light and salt in that school. I think people are kidding themselves, especially young children. Right? You know what's going to happen is they're going to be tainted. You know, we need to consider the impact as well that the world has on our children and even on yourself. You know, when people say, like, oh, you know, I go to uh, your nightclubs, that's an outreach. Yeah, you know, and you go there and, you, and you, you have to watch all the girls wearing no clothes and people getting drunk and, oh, but you're going to be a salt and light in that area, sure. Right, so you've got to consider yourself, lest thou also be tempted. But this verse is showing, look, there is an impact of the company you keep on you. So you need to be aware of that. What sort of friends... Do you keep? What sort of company do you keep? And it's not just friends, it's family too. You know, and some, and some of us, you know, we've grown up in a culture, like I, I, you know, my family, I come from a broken family, so a lot, you know, my, my, my dad always wishes we probably had this similar culture to some of you guys in church where family's always getting together and there's always every event, it's family, family, it's getting together and stuff. But, you know, like I talk about with priorities in life, you know, your family always keeps growing. The family tree keeps growing. The people they know and the cousins and the children and the grandchildren, there's going to be an endless number of events to go to and they're just going to increase as you get older. You're going to get to the point where you think, I've got to prioritize. You know, there's going to be some things I have to say no to. But I'm kind of going on a rabbit trail there. But my point is with family is, you know, a lot of you do spend a lot of time with your family. And that's not always a good thing because it depends, like with friends, it depends on what your family's like. You know, are your family, is your family taking you away from good things you could be doing with your life, taking up too much of your time? You know, what is their influence on you? You say, well, I have to go to these, all these family events. But when you go to these family events, are you being encouraged in the right direction or are you being encouraged in a, in a negative direction? So these are the things you've got to think about um, when company rubs off on you. Remember, be not deceived. Don't be tricked into thinking that it doesn't affect you. Evil communications corrupt good manners. All right, number three. So we want the right values. Stay positive, right company. Number three is having the right perspective. Having the right perspective. 2 Corinthians 4. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So how did Paul have this sort of perspective? You know, well, I think he gives us some insight into, in 2 Corinthians 4, lower down in the chapter, where he's saying, hey, nothing's going well for him, yet they're troubled on every side, you know, on all, from all angles, yet they're not stressed. Yeah, I like that one, you know, because you know, I do stress sometimes too much. 
I find like when I don't drink enough water and get enough rest and I stress a lot, like my skin issues really flare up. Um, that's just, I think, the damage that stress does to your body. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So, what's the insight here in 2 Corinthians 4? Well, it says here, for our light affliction. See how Paul had, had the right perspective on things, that even though he's going through much trouble, you know, he was still able to say through all this trouble and suffering that he went through that it was light as opposed to heavy. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Man, see, that's, that I think is one of the tricks to it. That's, a, that's the, one of the secrets. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So I talk about this a lot, like having an eternal perspective. You know, on the one hand, you know, life seems quite long. You know, like you know, time sometimes feels like it goes slow, but on the other hand, it doesn't. You know, life is very short. And if you realize life is short and eternity is long, it does help with negative things in life, you know, suffering and things like that. And, and it helps Paul. You know, Paul went through a lot of suffering in his life. Paul went through a lot of hard times. Paul went through a lot of trials and tribulations. But why was he able to stay positive? Well, he had the right perspective. So it's the same in our life. You know, maybe you have a loss of job or, you know, your business goes on, doesn't do well. Maybe you have investments that are not doing very well. Health, you may lose your health. You know, we lost our freedoms a lot for the last couple of years. Maybe things don't go your way. But how do you stay positive? Well, if you have the right perspective, you have an eternal perspective, you'll realize that in the grand scheme of things, these things don't really, are not as significant as you think they are. You know, there's something uh, that I was always taught, you know, going along to seminars and things. They say, uh, you know, don't be focused on the dot. You know, when they're trying to teach uh, employees and salespeople to be productive, you know, sometimes you get too stuck on the dot. And, um, and I, do, I, do, I do use this example, but you know, let's say you had a dot on the board and you focused on it, really focused in on it, then the dot seems very big. You know, so it's the same with like, the problems in your life. That's like a dot on the board. When you focus too much on it, they seem very big, but when you step back, then you realize you know, the dot is just a small dot on the page. So it's the same with our life. If we step back and we realize there's more to life than just this 80, 90, 100 years on this earth, there's an eternity after this, it's going to change the way you look at negative things in our life. And that's why you know, people that do suffer uh, you know, from disability, or they, they do, you know, they, they get dealt a harder hand in life. It's very hard to, to comfort these people if you think that this life is all there is, because it's unfair, you know, why did they get dealt a harder hand than somebody else? But if you realize that there's an eternity after this, then there's a great balancing of the scales and to who much is given, much shall be required. You know, people, you do with what you can, um, depending on what God gives you, and you're going to be rewarded accordingly, it, it's a great evening out of the circumstances. So, if we have an eternal perspective, you know, you can think, oh, how much worse could it be? You know, maybe when bad things happen, you think, well, maybe it's not as bad as it could be. Um, and to what purpose was this allowed? You know, ultimately, God is trying to mold us and improve us and mold us into the image of Jesus Christ so we have the right perspective on negative things in our life it help us to stay positive all right so that's number three the right perspective number four and this is something that i always you know i find i'm talking to a lot of people even you know when i've been talking to them on the campaign trail right because a lot of people that have been helping my campaign are people that are awake to the things of the world and are people who have seen the negative things in the world and Likewise, when I talked about at the beginning what your values are, number four is, you know, focus what is within your control rather than what is not. Focus what, on what is in your control rather than what is not. That helps you to stay positive because, you know, you can't control everything. You can't control all the negativity in the world. But what can you do? So it's like when I talk to people on the campaign trail and they, they, they're saying, oh, you know, all the... I hear about the cloud seeding, and I talk, and people tell me about all the you know, the banks and things like that, and all the uh, the WHO treaty. That's the one I'm hearing about now. Great reset, 
all this evil stuff that's going on in the world. And, you know, is it happening? Well, probably. You know, I'm not doubting that these, there's an evil agenda in the world. But I say to people, but what can we do about it? Right? So I don't like to spend and exert too much energy thinking about what I can't control. I want to spend my time and energy thinking about what I can control. What can I do about it? And that's why you know, I try to encourage people to get involved in things like that. So focus on what is within your control. You know, um, you know, this lesson always stuck with me when I was, uh, and I, I probably, those of you who know me have probably heard this story many times, but when I was uh, traveling back from uh, uh, Mexico with Elizabeth, and you know, if, you're, if you guys know the story, well, well, for those of you who don't, what happened was I was traveling back from Mexico with Elizabeth, and I didn't understand all the visa stuff. Right? So I booked my flight back from Mexico to America and then to Australia, right? Coming to back to Sydney or back to Perth. But I didn't realize that, you, you know, because as an Australian, you know, you can just travel and you, because I, I just, you just reach America, and you just fill out the form and they let you in and you're on your way. But what you're actually doing is you're, you're applying for a tourist visa. But because Australia has a, has a relationship with America, as an Australian, you can just travel there and get to the border and get your tourist visa and they'll let you in, right? But for Mexicans, you can't, right? Mexicans, you have to apply beforehand, you know, and then get your visa. Then only the plane will let a Mexican onto the plane to go to America. So in, in Mexico, I sold up everything, moved out of the house, you know, ended the lease, sold everything. We, we had a few suitcases packed, get to the airport, and then the flight attendant tells me, I can't let your wife on the plane, right? And I'm like, Oh, what do I do about this? You know, so, anyways, I had to, my dad ended up stepping, you know, got some money. Anyways, long story short, we ended up staying with a friend for a few months while we applied for a Canadian visa, and then we went through Canada. But I remember my, my friend that, was, that put us up for a few months while we were trying to sort out the visa, and because remember, we had moved out of our place, sold everything, right? He said, you know, what, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Because he said, look, if there's something you can do to change the circumstance, you could do it. And if there's nothing you can do to change the circumstance, then there's no point worrying about it. So the lesson that I always stuck with me, that there's no point worrying about things, and it's like with the, the things in the world, because if you can do something about it, then do it. And if you can't do anything about it, then you can't do anything about it. So there's never a time to worry, right? So... What, am I, what is my point here? Focus on the things you can control rather than the things you can't control. 1 Corinthians 4, look at this verse from the Apostle Paul. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, look at this, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer. it. Being defamed, we entreat. You see, so... He can control. So you can't control other people, right? And I talk about this with relationships as well. You know, you can't change other people. So people always say, well, why don't, you know, Paul could say, like, why don't they stop reviling us? Why don't you stop persecuting us? Why don't you stop defaming us? But it's not. It's like, hey, they revile us, but we can control our response. You know, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. So you can always control your actions. And, and that's what I, what I think our focus should be on. And that will help you to stay positive. Right? So you're not just always consumed with what you can't control. Consumed with all the negativity in the world and all the agendas in the world. You can focus on, hey, well, let's, let's do something about it. You know, spiritually as well. Like, hey, everyone's, you know, a lot of people are going to hell. What can you do about it? You're going to talk about, all oh, the evil satanic agenda, the evil homosexual agenda, the evil this, the evil that. Or are you going to get out there and start making a difference? Start preaching the gospel. Get yourself educated. You know, focus on that rather than how evil the world is. So just do your best, you know, and let, the, let God do the rest. Focus on the solution, right, not the problem. And if you focus on the solution rather than the problem, that you just help you to stay positive. So I'm not saying be ignorant of the problems. You know, don't get me wrong. Like I'm saying, don't be, don't be ignorant of the problems. You need to know the problems, but you don't need to be so focused on them. Focus on what you can control, not what you can't control. Number five, another tip to staying positive, you know how to stay positive, 
is focus on what you have. Right? So like with control and what you can't control, hey, focus on what you have rather than what you don't have. You know, so, so, so many times people are you know, disappointed with maybe how their life turned out or you know, maybe how their business turned out, or their career turned out, or their, you know, how their marriage turned out, or all those sorts of things. You know, but life is not over. Obviously, you can still try and make a, a difference. But in terms of staying positive so you don't discourage yourself into not even trying to improve things, hey, why don't you focus on what you have rather than what you don't have? So when it comes to job, house, car, you know, shoe, I've got all this big list here that I own. Shoes, plumbing. I don't even know why I put plumbing in. Oh, yeah, because I was saying, uh, you know, because in some countries you don't have plumbing. Right? So, see, these are things that, you know, so I, I, that to be taken for granted. I, I wrote it there and I, I don't even remember why I wrote it there. Because the, these are the things we take for granted. Right? We take for granted that we could turn the tap off and get water. We take for granted that you walk into a private room that's that's somewhat clean and sit on a toilet and press, press the flush and it disappears and you don't even have to think about it, you know? So, you know, we, we, we live such a privileged life and such a prosperous life, you know, to some extent in Australia, that we take it for granted and we, we get negative on things where if we just focus on the things that we have, we would stay positive. You know, air conditioning, you know, having a bed to sleep on. I mean, who had a good, I had an awesome sleep last night. I've had an awesome sleep the last couple of weeks. It's just like, it's just, you know, your head fits the pillow and you're just out, you know, and it doesn't matter what's going on in the house, like, don't, don't even wake up at all. You know, clothes. It's like you have life, health, you know, the health you do enjoy, family, you know, the freedoms that we do have. See, that's like focusing on the freedoms you have rather than always being discouraged about the freedoms that are being taken away. So, like I said, we want to, be, we want to fight for those freedoms, but there's a lot of freedoms you have. And it's just about, you know, making stay, staying positive. The fact that you can see, the fact that you can hear. You know, next time you enjoy a meal, you say, thank God that I can taste this. You know, thank God that I've got like a mouth to be even able to eat this. You know, can you tell I'm hungry? I haven't had much breakfast. Looking forward to lunch. So, you know, you know so when, these are the things that, you know, keep you positive. And at least, you know, make you appreciate the things you have in life. Hebrews 13, you know, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content. See, that means happy. Be content. Be happy with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that's salvation. You know, of all, well, I'm talking about physical things here. But what about salvation? That's the greatest thing. And no matter what happens in this life, we know we have salvation. We can lose everything. We can't lose our eternal salvation. That's so, what's so great about being eternally saved. You know, what other religion has this? No other religion has this. So even when all else fails, even when you fail, right? so it's not just when everything around you is failing, even when you fail, you, know, you don't do what you ought to, right? And you know, our life is not always pleasing to God, but you have salvation, right? And if you focus on that, that'll keep you positive, that'll keep you going, right? I don't know what the person that believes they can lose their salvation has, you know, because if you lose everything and you also believe you can lose salvation, what's the sort of foundation keeping you from falling off the cliff. I feel at least, you know, salvation is eternally secure. You believed on Jesus Christ, you cannot lose that. It's no matter what, you've got that anchor at the very end. You've got that knot at the end of the rope. But if somebody believes they can lose their salvation and you spiral down that depression and maybe you're not even living the life you think you should and, you know, there's nothing, there's no, there's no light at the end of the tunnel or, you know, something, that, that, that block at the end. The last thing I want to talk about, so we've talked about five things already. The last thing is how to stay positive is focus on others rather than yourself. Focus on others rather than yourself. So like we talked about focusing on the solution rather than the problem, well, if you focus on others rather than your own, you know, either shortcomings or, or you know, trials in your life, then you'll stay positive. Because, you know, you're, tr you're trying to help others rather than being focused on your own problems. You, you help other people with their problems. Philippians 2, verse 1. If there be any, therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. 
Look not every, every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. See, this is the mind that God wants us to have, right? That we focus on others more than we focus on ourselves. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, you know, we want to be more Christ. Like Jesus was like this too. Jesus had us in his mind when he came down and died on the cross. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See, so when you focus on others, it takes the focus off your problems and makes you think about others. You know? And it reminds you of the blessing you have of not having that problem you're helping with. <laughs> so that's sort of a positive too when you help others. You know, and soul winning is a good example. You know, soul winning is a great example where you know when you go out, you focus on preaching the gospel to others and you talk about salvation. Right? It reminds you as well of a problem that you don't have. <laughs> you know, because if you're saved, you believe on Jesus Christ, you know, you realize, gosh, like I've got I've got life better than some others, you know, maybe not physically, financially, but spiritually, definitely, right? Because there are a lot of people out there that aren't saved. And then if we focus on them, you know, so I sometimes soul winning is a, it can be a good escape for people because sometimes you're so focused on your own life, so focused on your own problems. And then you come to church and, you, and some people are very self-centered even when they come to church too. It's all about them. It's all about them. You know, what are they getting out of it as opposed to being a servant and thinking of others? Um, and soul winning can do that, you know, like when you go out and you're preaching the gospel, you know, you're not so focused on your own problems, it's like a moment where you are focused on the problems of others, right, and you go out and you preach, try and get them saved, and it reminds you, it reminds you of a lot of things, it reminds you of God's love for you as well, and like I said, a problem that you don't have. Jude 22, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, See, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. All right, so I hope that helps you this morning. You know, stay positive. You know, Mike, with the election results coming out, maybe the country is not going to be going in a good direction. I mean, even I think even Victoria has swung Labour. So you know, maybe there are more lockdowns to come, who knows. But there's always a silver lining, I think, in suffering, is that it wakes people up. You know, people are getting more involved, you know, spiritually and politically. So, you know, some, sometimes it's good. You know, I've always prayed for this in the past, that, you know, sometimes it's good for Christians to go through a bit of hard times because then it makes us appreciate the things that we've lost. So, hey, have the right values, stay positive, have the right company, the right perspective, focus on what you can control rather than what you can't. Focus on what you have, not what you don't have. And focus on others rather than yourself. All right? Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for, you know, advice and guidance. And uh, Lord, help us to think on the things that have virtue and praise. And uh, help us to stay positive, even in a dark and sinful world. Help us to be the salt and light, Lord, that you've called us to be. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.